Today, let's talk about God's promise of a coming crown. I'm going to read to you James chapter 1, verse 12, which says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. One of the most familiar and wonderful parts of the Bible is found in the opening words of the Sermon on the Mount, the portion commonly called the Beatitudes. Each of Jesus' statements in the Beatitudes begins with the words, Blessed are... Now, for this reason, we take notice when James begins this sentence with, Blessed is the man. This sounds like one of Jesus' Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount. In those great statements of blessing, Jesus did not tell us the only ways that we could be blessed. But here, we also learn that we can be blessed as we endure temptation. Now, James did not say, Blessed is the man who is never tempted. Nor does it say, blessed is the man who finds all temptation easy to conquer. Instead, the promise of blessedness is given to the one who endures temptation. There's a special gift of blessedness from God to the one who can say no to temptation, thereby saying yes to God. James then told us the purpose of God in allowing temptation. It says, for when he has been approved. The purpose of God in allowing temptation is to approve us, that through the testing we would be revealed as genuine and strong in our faith. Connecting back to the beginning of James's letter, we can see that temptation is one of the various trials that we face. As we persevere through temptation, we are approved and will be rewarded as the work of God in us is evident through our resistance of temptation. Enduring through temptation, we have a promise given to us, the crown of life which the Lord has promised. With this, James reminds us that it really is worth it to endure under the temptations we face. The idea of our coming crown is amazing, almost more than we can take in. I liked what Charles Spurgeon, that great preacher of Victorian England, said about our coming crown. He said this, quote, There is a crown for me. Does it make you laugh? I seldom think of it without beginning to laugh. Shall you and I wear crowns? Shall it ever be that our poor limpings will yet win the race, that our staggering struggles will yet overcome, and that we shall be crowned? Oh, you dear Christian people that live in poverty and obscurity, I have a reverence for your heads, which are already anointed with grace, for your heads that are yet to be crowned with glory. You run often run better than the greatest and most observed of your fellow Christians, and you shall not miss your reward. There is a crown laid up, not only for Paul, but for all of them that love our Lord's appearing. Wherefore, laugh to yourselves, not as unbelief as Sarah did, but with a holy joy as Abraham did. Shall I have a crown? Shall this aching brow be decked with a crown? Shall this forehead be decked with a tiara? Oh my God, will you set a coronet on my head? Then I will gird up my loins and quicken my pace, since your crown is so sure to those who will run with patience. Friends, what a beautiful statement that is. We can laugh. Not an unbelief, but an expectant joy. There is a crown for us. For, as James says, to those who love him. You know, that describes the motive for resisting temptation. We do it because of love for God. The passions of sinful temptation can only really be overcome by a greater passion. A passion for the honor and glory and relationship with God. Friends, some people resist temptation because of the fear of man. The thief suddenly becomes honest when he sees a policeman. The man or woman controls their lusts because they couldn't be bare to be found out and thus embarrassed or humiliated. 
Other people resist the temptation to one sin because of the power of another sin. The greedy miser gives up partying because he doesn't want to spend the money. But the best motive for resisting temptation is to love him. To love God with greater power and greater passion than your love for sin. In a season of temptation, ask God for strength, but especially ask for greater love for Him. You can ask God for that and ask Him for it today.